Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining me. Today I'm talking about a really simple but important question with regards to super spreaders of COVID-19. Now, it was a term that was coined some time ago, and it was early in the pandemic. And I think it was at the point where they were pushing um, population level vaccination. And part of the issue was at that point, there was a perception that by vaccinating the whole population, you would stop the spread of disease. From a scientific point of view, there was always a problem with that because of mucosal immunity. But that's a separate discussion. The point being is that there was a recognition that some people seem to be able to spread disease far more than others. And that raised a question about the concept about a super spreader. And so there was an interesting article that um, I have here. And this article was published uh, all the way back in 2021 here, um, and it was talking about the characteristics, the truth about super spreaders. And so they were looking at, this was after Biden's inauguration, and they were talking about what is a super spreader um, when one person infected with COVID-19 infects around three other people, a super spreader may infect about 20. They're highly infectious. And so therefore, more importantly, they're not aware of the fact that they are passing on virus uh, to a lot of people. The reason it had come up was because there were a number of super spreader events. And this was noted, particularly at the time in, um, I remember when one of the first ones came up, there was a big conference. The only people who were allowed to go were vaccinated, but they still had a super spreader event. And so it clearly indicated that that didn't seem to impact on the ability of the virus to spread. And again, this is just about mucosal immunity. So it brings me to why I'm focused on this. There are two reasons. One is because of the ongoing Kickstarter program about humming heroes inside the nose almost nobody knows. And the reason this came about was when I was collaborating with Lumientia Publications, and I was saying, if there was one concept I'd want people to understand, is that there are things that can be done, very simple things that impact on the ability of the virus to spread. And one of them is just around nitric oxide. And so that principle then led us to work on this very important document, which is the power of no or the power of nitric oxide. This is the link here that you will be taken to if you are interested in understanding a little bit more about what this is. You will get a free ebook which is about the power of nitric oxide in keeping you healthy. It's far more than just sinuses and COVID. And also the link to the article that I'm talking about, the main characteristics of a super spreader. So it brings us to why is this so important to me? What really is it that I'm trying to do? Anyone who reflects objectively on where we are in the pandemic will realize that even though we have less cases of severe COVID-19, and that's because the population would either be vaccinated or they would have natural immunity. There is still a lot of COVID going around. And don't underestimate this virus. Just because it doesn't present with severe COVID-19 doesn't mean that it is not actually significant in terms of disease presentation. What I've been looking out for is the fact that you will see disease manifestation sometimes weeks, sometimes a month or two after infection. We need to understand why that is occurring. But bringing us back to this question about who are super spreaders and what are their characteristics? This brings us to the article that I did on Substack, and this is what you'll have a link to. Um, it was a paid um, Substack link, but I've just opened it up so that anyone can read it. But again, you have to, to click on the link um, or register for the ebook to be able to get it. But here is the point that I was trying to make, is that there are a number of people who seem to continue to spread the virus. They're what we could describe as super spreaders. In this is another article that I did all the way from July 2022, 
about Omicron and persistent sinus infection, but I'll come back to that in a second. Here are the, the main things about this char characteristics of the super spreader group based on the fact that they are likely to have issues with interferon autoantibodies. They tend to be between the age of about 35 to 45, female more likely than male, so slightly more female preponderance. Interestingly, they're not usually obese and they're non-smokers. And I have added this in. This is my own observation. High probability of food intolerances, whether or not it's gluten, dairy, or, or not. And what I've been linking this to is the fact that when they did a paper looking at autoantibodies that were against interferon, this is the characteristics of the people that they would likely to um, they would be likely to find. Really important piece of information when we are understanding what it is about super spreaders, because what it means is that one, they are not aware that they are super spreaders. That's a problem, because if they're not aware, it means that there's nothing they can do to mitigate it. Some people would argue, therefore, that everyone should wear masks. That's a different discussion. Well, why don't we identify who they are and isolate them? It won't work because they could be prone to further infections in the future. What are you going to do? Isolate them for the long term? No. We need to therefore have a strategy that we can across the board impact on the ability of the virus to spread, even in people who may have interferon autoantibodies. Now, there's another characteristic about them that I highlighted is that they are also the people who are more likely to be having recurrent upper respiratory tract infections, because this is pointing to the fact that they probably always had interferon autoantibodies that interfere with the um, mechanisms that the body uses to fight off infection. Additionally, they are likely to have multiple COVID-19 infections. So they'll have recurrent, multiple recurrent infections. That's also a red flag that maybe they could be a super spreader. And guess what? Sadly, you have to mention vaccination status because whichever way we take it, COVID is spreading quite highly in highly vaccinated regions. So certainly when we look at the response of the immune system, the mucosal immune system, it still tends to trend towards responding against the original virus rather than the Wuhan, I mean the Wuhan virus rather than the current Omicron virus. That's also a problem. And so across the board, we have this issue where we could be having people who are recurrently infected, prolonged infections with limited symptoms spreading to multiple, multiple people around them. How in the world can we stop this? And this is where it comes back to, again, that point that I was making um, about the power of nitric oxide. This is this is where I think that there is a real opportunity to make a difference. So this is the power of no. And what it's highlighting here, and this is the whole book. So this is, this is quite a comprehensive book. It's not just dealing with the, um, the sinuses. It's talking about the overview of nitric um, oxide. It's talking about um, the links to cardiovascular health. It's response as an antiviral. It's a very powerful molecule and it's a gas and its role in respiratory health, and again, the synthesis. So it's a quite a comprehensive book, depending on people's interest in terms of understanding the details of it. It's a very important document. And so I'd advise you, please click on the link. It's the only link that you will see that will drive you to sign up for free to get this book. Here is now where I'm going to explain why I think this is occurring. And it's again tied to a Substack post that I did since 2022. So that's almost coming up to two years ago. Um, so almost two years, one year and nine months ago. And it was because I identified something that I still don't think people quite get. Could the rise in Omicron represent persistent sinus infection? So this is why I was focused on it. And the reason why I was focused on it is that you have to understand that the sinuses here, these are the main sinuses in the, in the skull. This here is the frontal sinus. This here is the maxillary. These are the ethmoidal sinuses. This is the sphenoid sinus. This is the side-on view. 
This is the frontal view of it. And one of the interesting things about sinus is that I have only started to realize, and I did this in, in the recent presentation, is that they seem to be a reservoir for nitric oxide. Now, nitric oxide, as I said before, has antiviral properties and it has antibacterial properties. And so therefore, anything that will impact on the way how the body functions or fights the virus is extremely valuable. Here is part of the link that I had in that substack is the interesting, um, this is a preprint. Can you believe this is still a preprint from 2022? But it's the evolution of nasal and olfactory infection characteristics of SARS-CoV-2 variants. As I said, this was all the way from April uh, 2022, uh, still in the preprint stage. I'm not sure why it's taken so long for this to be fully published. But I want to highlight a very important point when they looked at Omicron versus the Wuhan, the original uh, variant, or even the Delta strain, what they found was that Omicron was, although they found that they found that the olfactory epithelium, that's the nose, where the, the original strains tended to infect, Omicron group was reduced by 6.7%. It may explain why some people appear negative, even though they're positive, because there is a significant, significantly less virus in the olfactory epithelium. But where is the virus going? Interestingly, we observe that the Omicron infected the um, nasal and sinus respiratory cells was increased seven to tenfold when compared to the Wuhan or Delta variant, suggesting olfactory to respiratory tropism transition within the Omicron variant. And what this is highlighting is that not only is the virus not infecting that olfactory region, but it is targeting the respiratory region. That's part of the reason why you have the, the bronchitis picture where people are coughing all the time, the respiratory epithelium, but also the respiratory epithelium is targeted in those nades, in the sinus pathways. And this is a, an image as to what it would look like. Um, what they have here is that they, they, they're showing in this here the different, um, the different responses of the virus. And this here is the level that Omicron inf infects. And you can see the blue represents how well it's infecting. And this is what is happening. It seems to be targeting not just the nasal passages, but the sinuses. And once you understand that you have sinus infection, if you have persistent sinus infection, it is extremely difficult to clear. You can't even use any of the normal things that people may do nasal washes or they do various things to try and reduce the infection capabilities. But when you look at the fact that the virus is able to target inside these areas and become very difficult to remove, it would explain why some people become super spreaders. Because even when their, their olfactory region clears, which would be down here if you were to take a swab, you still have virus sitting in the sinuses. And then they will have these recurrent episodes of these continual infection where they're fine for a few weeks, then it seems to come back, then it goes again, then it seems to come back. And what I was saying is that I suspect that they have never cleared the virus properly from their sinuses. This is why I'm talking about humming heroes. Because people don't understand that just by humming, you increase the concentration up to 1,500 times in the context of nitric oxide in the sinuses. Just think about that. Just by humming, you can increase nitric oxide, which acts as an antiviral and could therefore impact on the capability of the virus to spread. This is why I'm talking about humming heroes. It sounds like a simple concept, and it is, but it could be very powerful. And my hope is that we will educate people to realize that, listen, what have you got to lose? Just hum along, and it's just a few minutes every time you remember it. How hard is that to do? Increasing the concentration of nitric oxide in these sinuses acts as an antiviral, 
protects against spreading of the virus and could potentially have a population impact that could be even more powerful than what people hope with regards to masking. That is the point. Who are the super spreaders? We don't know. Can we do something about it? At the moment, we can't, other than giving population level antivirals. And as you can see, no one wants to acknowledge that pot, um, potential because the antivirals they'd have to use are not the antivirals that they are therefore agreeing with. And so therefore, vaccination can't stop this. So vaccination has an impact on the severity of the disease, but actually it predisposes the population to ongoing circulation. And every time there is circulation of the virus, we still have the longer term risk of different kinds of diseases. Unless we stop the virus from spreading, we are going to face an absolute nightmare. Do not underestimate this virus. So in conclusion, I'm encouraging you, click on the link below. This is here to get the free ebook the power of nitric oxide, you'll help us to do the analysis to make sure there is no mistakes before this is then formally published. And you'll get the link to the main characteristics of a COVID super spreader, which will have all the substack links that I was talking to you about. There is very little to lose here. And you have the opportunity to learn for yourself and more critically to educate those around you. It's important at this point that we continue to think carefully about strategies that can impact on what is happening across the population in terms of disease. I can only warn everyone, some people think the virus is mild. That's one side. It may be causing mild symptoms at this point, but it doesn't mean that the virus is not causing significant disease, which will present later down the line. Some people think that the virus is absolutely frightening and can only be stopped by population level vaccination. As I said, vaccination is to protect the high risk. There is no evidence at the moment that at population level, you can actually stop the circulation. And so therefore, what other options do we have? We have to try and find innovative ways, innovative strategies of making an impact in the long term on this pandemic. I hope you find this valuable and please click on the link, join us in this journey, be educated. Let's see if we can make an impact on the lives around us. Have a great evening.